Hey there, it's Rob Wecker from Iron Bridge Wine Company in Columbia, Maryland. I'm here with Chef Tyler this morning. He's going to show us how to cook some scallops, make a gremolata, and for the super fun part, we're going to sit down and pair some wines with it. Alright, now for the fun part. We're going to sit down, we're going to taste some scallops, try to pair some wine with it. We, because we're footloose and fancy free, we did not rehearse this. So I had no idea what Tyler was gonna include with the scallops. Threw us a couple of curveballs that we can work through. Number one is the artichokes. Artichokes are difficult to pair with wine because artichokes always make the wine taste sweeter. So we have to balance for that. And then he threw us some chipotle in there in the chipotle hummus. Uh, so we've got some heat. We need some sweetness to balance that. So we've gotta work both ways with we need some sweetness for the heat, but then we need less sweetness because of the artichokes, gonna make the wine taste sweeter. Lots of vegetables, strongly flavored things like mushrooms and tomatoes. Um, tomatoes got good acidity, so we gotta balance that. That's certainly that micro celery, which if you don't have micro celery at home, you could certainly use celery leaves chopped or fresh herbs if you want. Uh, and then gremolata. Now he helped us out because gremolata has uh, citrus juice in it rather than vinegar. Vinegar is kind of an enemy. Um, so we'll work through that. Anyway, first thing we're going to do is some bubbles. 1,000 bolle. This is Prosecco from Northern Italy. And from our last video, if you remember how to open bubbles, we want a kiss, not a pop. So we'll take the cage off. We're actually going to twist the bottle. And we just want to hear a little... That was maybe a little too much, but anyway. All right. Here we go, let's give it a sniff. Definitely crisp, bright. Um, I specifically chose this because it's no oak. Um, the fruit's accentuated here, lots of apple. Crisp and bright, tiny bit of sweetness. Most bubbles do have a little bit of sugar in them. All right, dude, let's dig in, let's try this. Get the perfect cork full, a little bit of everything. Yum. That's really good. So, when you first taste it, that hummus really comes through and kind of. The other things come along as you're tasting. With regard to the wine, <clears throat> those bubbles kind of act as like a little scrub pad for the richness of the dish, cleans your palate. That's a really good pairing. Sweetness is in balance there. It's not, not too sweet. The acidity works across the board. Did you like it? Yeah, it's delicious. All right, so we'll give that one two thumbs up. Bubbles, always a good bet. All right, we're gonna switch. We're gonna do some Pinot Grigio. Sticking with Italy here, cool climate. Uh, this is from Alice Lagater. And this specific Pinot Grigio, single vineyard pour from uh, Alto Adige. So we're up in the mountains near Germany, Switzerland. So this actually um, carries through that um, kind of lemon, citrus, a little bit of orange, but, but, um, Real bright, clean, um, in a part of Alto Adige that was an ancient seabed. So we'll have lots of minerals from all that decomposed limestone that's in there. We'll give that guy a swirly. Definitely can smell minerals, apple, lime. A little tasty taste, yum. So our best bet when pairing food and wine, and I neglected to do that on the first one, is a sip, bite, sip is your best approach. So you get the wine in your mouth. I'm gonna get set up with all my components. Then we'll have at it. All right, it's a two-fisted process here. Sip, bite, sip. I actually think that the dish 
it's a little too rich for the wine. The wine comes through as a tiny bit watery. And when we tasted it, it had good body, but the, the dish is so uh, rich that I think it got lost a little bit. So I don't know if we'll give that a thumbs down, but it's like, Meh. didn't didn't create that third taste that, that the uh, 1000 Bolle did. Anyway, not a bad pairing, just not amazing. Thirdly, see, I told you, we don't, we don't rehearse this. We have no idea what's going to happen. Anything could happen. All right. Schloss Reinhardtshausen Riesling. Yes. Say that ten times fast. We're in the Rheingau in Germany now. I know what you're thinking. Ooh, I hate Riesling. No, you love Riesling. Riesling's amazing with food. So uh, this is a single vineyard, it's called Monopole, is the term for single vineyard that's owned by one estate. Uh, and this is on the dry side. 09 vintage, uh, it's 13% alcohol, which is a lot for, for German Riesling, but no sugar, tons of acidity. So let's give, it a, let's give it a whirl. Actually, in older Riesling, you get a little bit of fusel aromas, um, the good smell of diesel fuel. You know, people are cringing there. Great acidity, beautiful fruit. It's actually even got some like blueberry fruit in there. Really nice, lots of minerals. All right, let's get set up. We're gonna do our sip bite sip. Get some gremolata, herbs, the whole kit and caboodle. Sip bite sip. That's really good. Totally, the interesting thing, it really brought out the citrus, the wine, and the dish together, and really made it sing. The herbaceousness came out big time. It pairs really well. Um, I think the key to these three, especially Riesling and Bubbles, is that there's no oak on them. So I know people are probably saying, what about red wine? When you come here to dine, because our servers are so incredibly gracious, if you want to drink Cabernet with your scallops, we will absolutely allow you to do that. However, it's just not going to work. Any, the, the seafood is so delicate that any amount of tannins, even barrel fermented Chardonnay, is going to be difficult because the tannins in the wine are going to combat against the oils in the fish and give you that kind of copper penny taste. So when we talk about food and wine pairing creating that third flavor, one plus one equals three, it's actually a bad three uh, in that case. So there's really probably no reds that will work with scallops, I'm sorry to say. But as we've proven today, Bubbles Prosecco from Italy, amazing. Dry Riesling from Germany, also amazing. We'll give that one two thumbs up. Did you like it? It was delicious. I got two deliciouses out of him, <laughs> and we got a meh on the middle pairing. But I uh, hope that helped. We hope to see you soon. Uh, Looking forward to seeing you guys. There you go. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, so we've presented two great wines that pair with scallops. Now what we want to hear from you is, what wine do you love with fresh seafood? Scallops, shrimp, shellfish, you name it, crab. If you have food questions, you can ask Tyler. If you have wine questions, you can ask me. Or you can ask Tyler wine questions, or you can ask me food questions. I probably won't know the food question But I won't know answer. the wine questions, so it's okay. <laughs> but get us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com forward slash ironbridgewine. You can tweet us. Uh, Vince, are we on Instagram? We have an account, All but right. I don't know. You can Instagram us, maybe. <laughs> or you can always get us through the website. Anyway, thanks very much. See you next time. Thank you.